Okay, post-trib moment number 54, the word elect in the New Testament. We're going to have a little bit of fun on this one. He really stumbles on this. Now, in order to ignore the clear teaching of Jesus Christ in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21 about the timing of when the rapture will take place, those who believe in a pre-tribulation rapture... We don't ignore it, by the way. Uh, we rightly divide it. It's the second coming at the end there. You know, we don't ignore it. Have to twist the meaning of the word elect. Because, of course, the Bible... No, we don't. ...talks about in those passages a trumpet sounding, Jesus Christ coming in the clouds and gathering together the elect uh, from the uttermost part of earth to the uttermost part of heaven. And in order to say, well, that's not the rapture, they have to come up with a different definition for the word elect. But the Bible does define it differently. Because if you look up every single time the word elect is used in the New Testament, it is always referring to believers. Oh, really? Oh, boy. Let's play that again. Definition for the word elect. Because if you look up every single time the word elect is used in the New Testament, it is always referring to believers. Okay. Did you hear him? Every time the word elect shows up, it is always a reference to believers. That's what he said. Correct? Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David, huh, you mean he was a Jew? Mm-hmm. Was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Of course, we know that Jesus Christ was not born from the seed of a man, okay, but he came and was born into the race of the Jewish people. Blessed be the Lord God of Shem. All right, he was a Jew. Now look at this. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evil doer, even on the bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Now check this one out. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake. Sakes, excuse me. You say, well, that saved Christians. Keep reading. That they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Oh, wait a second. Um, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The elect then, the elect's sake there, the elect in the verse are lost Jews. Oh no, what are you going to do about that? Huh. What on earth is he going to do about this? How do you explain this there, Stevie? How do you explain that? The elect in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 10 are lost Jews. Read it. You say, I still don't believe it. Okay, how about another one? Romans chapter 11. Okay. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. Okay. Who was it? What are you talking about here? Israel. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. Look at this. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. Enemies of the gospel are the election. Yeah. You see, God made a covenant. A covenant of promise. My covenant unto them. He made the covenant with Abraham and his seed. Abraham through Isaac. This guy knows, doesn't know a thing about this. He just lied to you. He said that every reference to the elect in the New Testament is about believers. He just lied. And the election there, the elect that you have in Matthew chapter 24 is speaking about the Jews. Let's continue. And sometimes it is even specifically referring to believers that are Gentiles. Let me give you some great examples of how the word elect is used. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 11, the Bible reads, Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, and of course, you know, there are verses that talk about Christians being the elect. Sure, there's no problem there. Kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. So there Paul is speaking to the Colossians, who are Gentiles, and telling them to put on, as the elect of God, 
this, that, and the other. And well, then they all must all references to the elect must be to Christians. No, I just showed you two of them to the elect sake there in in uh let's see where it was again. Second Timothy chapter two verse ten. I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Right there, and Romans chapter eleven. Two passages that talk about the elect that have nothing to do with saved Christians. It's talking about lost Jews that are elect. He can't handle these verses. And so he is calling the Colossians the elect. But not only that, he said in the verse before that there is neither Greek nor Jew in Christ. There is neither circumcision nor uncircumcision. Put In Christ, yes. We're in Christ right now in the church age. That ends at the rapture before the time of Jacob's trouble. Um, therefore, as the elect of God, this and that. Now, whenever you see a therefore in the Bible, I heard one person say it, that when you see a therefore, you need to see what it's there for. And whenever you see a therefore, it's referring you to something else that's already been said. So he starts out by saying, in verse number 11, there is neither Greek nor Jew. There is neither circumcision nor uncircumcision in Christ. So, uh, 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 in Christ. I agree with that. Okay, in the church age. Let me show you again here another verse. Romans chapter 11. I've covered this thing over and over and over again because Steve Anderson can't handle this. Until blindness, look at this, blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. You see it? Until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Right now we are in that time, that fullness of the Gentiles. We are in the church age where there is neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female, circumcision or uncircumcision. We are all one in Christ Jesus. Yeah, right now in the church age. But that will come to an end. Therefore, you, Colossians, can put on these things as the elect of God. Another great example is in uh, Romans 11:7, where the Bible says, What then? Israel has not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 11, verse 7. Okay. <clears throat> what then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. But compare scripture with scripture. Blindness in part has happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so, all Israel shall be saved. This is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. It's right there, and this blind, hypocrite liar will keep it from you. Well, if, if Israel and the elect were the same thing, that wouldn't make any sense, because he says that Israel has not obtained it, the election has obtained it. So those are obviously two different things. He, you liar. He said specifically to the Thessalonians. And of course, the book of 1 Thessalonians is a great book on Bible prophecy and about the rapture and the tribulation. He says, liar. To them, knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. So he says that the Thessalonians are elect. He says that the Colossians are elect. Romans. And he says that the Jews are elect. Eight is very clear that those who've been justified by the blood of Jesus Christ are elect. Elect means the saved. And so if we then go back. Elect means the saved. You just heard him say it again. Romans chapter 11. Touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. As concerning, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. One more time with feeling. Second Timothy chapter two, verse ten. I endure all things for the elect's sakes, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It's right there. Back to Matthew 24 with our proper definition, we see that Jesus Christ is coming in the clouds, a trumpet is sounding, and he's gathering the saved. 
Same thing in Mark 13. Same thing in Luke 21. How do you ignore that? How do you explain that away? You can't unless you change the meaning of the word elect. And that's why I would... Like you just did. ...encourage you to look up every single time the word elect is used in the New Testament. It's very consistent. The elect are believers. The elect are the saved, whether they be Jew or Gentile. Read Colossians 3, 11, and 12. Liar.